Hey everybody, it's, uh, what day is it? It's, uh, Monday, March 16th, 17th, something like that. <clears throat> Whew, man. So I had a three-day weekend off days from my work, and, uh, I guess I actually did a lot today. I, I went for, I went... To the post office and for a walk. I washed my blankets and my clothes and uh, read, watched a little raw. Now I'm doing a review, but before I do the review, I'm uh, gonna try to keep this going. Wow. Oh. Got some more uh, top tens, uh, top ten favorite Black Sabbath songs. So here's my uh, top ten Black Sabbath songs. No particular order. Hand of Doom, Electric Funeral, Lord of This World, Snowblind, Neon Knights, Johnny Blade. Johnny Blade, dude, dude have you heard Johnny Blade? Johnny Blade is such a Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, it's off. Uh, I don't know, technical ecstasy or uh, dude, Johnny Blade. Turn up the night. Son of the Southern Cross. Dude, son of the Southern. Uh, with Dio and, and every time I hear the song, I think of uh, Fist of the North Star. Fairies wear boots and a time machine. Time machine is just it just warmed its way into my head. And it's another Dio track, and I have a other people's top tens. My friend Gary from the great state of Pennsylvania. Okay, Gary's are symptom of the universe. Children of the grave, into the void, behind the wall of sleep, neon nights. Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, Supernatural, which I can't, I don't, I can't, I don't know that one, and Children of the Sea. <clears throat> and we got good old Garth, uh, his top ten, Electric Funeral, NIB, War Pig, Sweet Leaf, Planet Caravan, Fairies Wear Boots, Symbols of the Universe, Iron Man, Into the Void, and The Wizard. So if you have, if, if you like Black Sabbath, I mean, they just, I mean, Black Sabbath, they created metal, I mean, they're just like, one of the first bands you ever heard, for me, anyway. So I, have a, I also have a letter to read. I effed up and sealed your package without this letter. Hope they arrive at some time. Thursday, March 14, 2024. Cheap burrito day. Hi, Artie. Here's some VHS I got at the shop you would love called Strange Main. It's all old full, It's all old physical media, zines, stickers, etc. You luckily have a few of the VHS titles already, but maybe you don't. They were an impulse buy. I thought of you when I saw them. Here's a stack of the new zines. Distro, uh, distribute them as you see as you please. It'd be extra cool if they got to Hogwild and Southtown Vinyl. Do what you will. <coughs> Thanks for contributing to the zine. Much gratitude. Just a short note. I hope you're good. So, saw that is already 90 degrees in good old San Antonio, Texas by Patterson. Yeah, but it's, it's actually, it's a, it's cold, it was cold today. I mean, I guess it's like everywhere, you know, you wait an hour and the weather's going to change. But... I still have a movie review to do, Future Kick 1991, directed by Damien Klaus, written by 
Catherine Siren and Damien Klaus. Wow, I'm so tired. Oh. So I've always wanted to see Future Kick just because of the VHS cover. It's a, it's just it's just a Terminator ripoff with uh, I don't I don't even think it's it's a uh, Don the Dragon Wilson on the cover. I was like, who's this badass like Asian dude? I was like, that's not Don the Dragon Wilson. So it's a uh... oh. Okay, cut to the chase. This movie was an hour and twelve minutes. It's a wannabe Terminator ripoff, and like, oh my god! Just uh, as I was watching it, I was like, dude, there's so much good stuff in this movie. The story I thought was good, like. All the rich people have moved to the moon, which is like Elysium. Uh, the government or the corporations have created like cyborgs to, you know, to be like a police force, Blade Runner. As I was watching, I was like, this is like, it reminded me of Upgrade, which is, which is so much better. Um, but ultimately, like, for a movie that's only an hour and 12 minutes, it dragged. And I'm sorry to say, say that because I was like, okay, this is going to be like TC2000. I can't remember the name of these other post-apocalyptic movies. TC2000. Yeah. Uh, American, oh, American Cyborg. I mean, that. It's just a... Uh, man. Like, it had a lot of good ideas, and, dude, the, the sets look great. Like, they're just, they just looked, uh, like, um, <laughs> like, just good. Like, you'll see a person, there's a, like, Don, Don Dragon Wilson and a Meg Foster. They're walking down the street, and there's a guy, like, he's got, like, a coat on, and he's, like, freezing. He's got a, a, a barrel fire going. I was like, dude, that, that just makes... This looks great, uh, but overall, it was good and bad. There's some, uh, oh my god, I don't even know where I'm going at, but should you watch it? Yes, because there's some, there's like three really good gore sequences. <laughs> there's a part where the one of the bad guys knocks a dude's head off with like a fire escape ladder. He 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 lets it loose and it just knocks this dude's head off and I was like, holy shit. Um And then there's a oh, oh dude, I'm getting it mixed up with Evil Ed now. There's a um, head explosion there's some really good blood squibs but overall future kick it just was um just real slow and Don the Dragon Wilson he's just like I hate to, to say it but he's like he has no charisma at all he's a great kickboxer I'm sure he's a great metal martial artist. But watching it, I was like, dude, the raid guys are gonna destroy you. Uh, Ong Bak is gonna reduce you to just to ashes. But he does have he does have some good like sidekicks, um, 
Hey, he just might mostly got some good kicks. But also, there was a lot of good actors like Meg Foster in, is in this. Al Ruscio is in this, who has been in actually more TV, but he was in The Godfather 3. And dude, if you're in the if you're anywhere in the Godfather series, like, you know, you've got to be a good actor. He's in here. There's a lot of side actors that are really good. Oh, yeah. A lot of nudity in this, too. Uh, this is almost like a cavalcade of strippers and, like, where are they appearing? A lot of, uh, a lot of breast, breasts. Revealed. There's one part where they kill this girl, they rip her shirt off first, and I was like, okay, we'll just see that. She actually had, she had some nice jabber clackers on her. They're, they're totally fake, but they look really good. Chris Penn is in this. Chris Penn, like, after this, he got, you know, this is before Reservoir Dogs. And, but he's a good villain. And, and I was like, does he know how to fight? Did Chris Penn learn martial arts? Doesn't matter. Um, but should you watch Future Kick is the ultimate question? Yes, because I'm just obsessed with these um, like 90s Terminator, Road Warrior, Blade Runner ripoffs. And, and this movie, like, Cram so much. There's um, flashbacks where like they show this as a, they show all this stuff that happened. Like where, but yeah, Donald Dragon Wilson is a cyborg. Halfway through the movie, I was like, he's getting his ass kicked. I was like, it'd be cool if he was like, a little tougher. Then I realized, oh yeah, he's a cyborg. Why is he getting his ass kicked? But the guys he were fighting were cyborgs too. They're they're called Cyberons. And, uh, I'm just like, dude, there's, but then they show you, like, he'll get, sh he'll get shot and there's some sparks. He gets his, uh, wrist fixed. But I was like, he's just, there's no, he has no advantages of being a cyborg or cyber on, as they say. Yeah, I was like, he, it's just, he, that didn't even matter. But still, I'll give it a, a two and a half ends of fate. Meg Foster. Meg Foster is just, she's a good actress. And uh, she brings some like gravity to the movie. Just those, I, I was like, why was she like wasting away in all the B movies she made? She was, it, was like, is it because of her eyes? Maybe. She just says she's just so striking. Maybe like she intimidated the um, movie producers when she went for auditions. But uh, Dragon Kick, I still want, I still want the VHS. Um, but oh yeah, okay. I'm listening to uh, an Aggravator, Populist Destructor. She goes along with, with the whole, well, actually this isn't like post-apocalyptic thrash, but it's still, it's still really good. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. I've always wanted to see Future Kick. I saw it. I saw the good stuff, a lot of bad stuff, and I'll see you later. Bye.